Welcome to Jamaica Magazine, where vibrant culture meets breathtaking landscapes, all while keeping you abreast of developments in the country. Join us as we explore land ownership, the musical journey of popular recording artist Mortimer, plus so much more. I'm Adrian Atkinson. I'll be right back. The Joint Select Committee of Parliament reviewing the Domestic Violence Act wants to hear from you. Review the Act and share your opinions with the committee. You can find a copy of the Act on the Parliament's website at www.japarliament.gov.jm under the heading Publications. Once you have reviewed the Act, submit your written opinions by Tuesday, April 30, 2024 to Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston or Clark at japarliament.gov.jm. Let your voice be heard. And now we get to recap of what happened in the office of the Prime Minister this past week. STEM education was a primary focus for Prime Minister Andrew Holness last week. At the Future Ready conference on Wednesday, Mr. Holness announced that plans were being discussed for the establishment of a science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM innovation teaching center. This is to be constructed within the National Heroes Circle surrounding in Kingston. It aligns with the redevelopment of Hero Circle, which will include a new parliament building and other structures to house the various government ministries and agencies. I'm very careful that we should locate strategic buildings in areas that make logical sense. You don't want to put your strategic buildings in places where you can't access them, infrastructure is not there. So we have a plan for the redevelopment of the Hero Circle area, which is in proximity to Michael. And I'm certain that within that plan, we will find a space for the STEM Teacher Innovation Center. At the conference, the Prime Minister declared Jamaica as a STEM island. So today I am pleased to declare Jamaica as a STEM island with a vision of fostering innovation, driving economic growth, and empowering our people to thrive in the global knowledge economy. Through our collaborative all hands on deck approach, government, private sector, academia, and the civil society, we will work towards this goal. Jamaica already boasts four centers for excellence for STEM, set up with the support of the Hart NSTA Trust, and the government has begun the process of constructing six STEM schools across the island. Meaning schools, that will be pulled out of the traditional modality of education, run under a different education regulation that is designed specifically to promote this agenda of developing the Jamaican who does not fear mathematics, does not fear engineering, does not fear science, that embraces it and that will use it for the creation of value for the Jamaican people. Among other initiatives, last year, the STEM Tertiary Education Program was launched to support 1,250 Jamaican students. It's for them to pursue a STEM teaching career at the Micah University over the next five years. We will implement comprehensive STEM education reforms from the primary to the tertiary levels. We will develop ecosystems to encourage startups, entrepreneurs, and innovators. We will encourage the growth of STEM industries such as biotechnology, information technology, and advanced manufacturing. We will also leverage STEM to grow and monetize the musical, artistic, cultural, and other natural talents of our people. Prime Minister Holness says the government will also seek to leverage STEM solutions to address environmental challenges, including climate change, renewable energy, and sustainable agriculture. He explains that the broader vision is to develop a skilled workforce capable of competing in global markets. 
the vision also includes positioning Jamaica as a hub for STEM research, innovation, collaboration, and other developments in the Caribbean and beyond. By embracing STEM as a national priority, Jamaica will unlock its full potential, driving prosperity, peace, and productivity in a sustainable and equitable way for all our Jamaican citizens and indeed for the world. And reacting to the sad news of the death of a former recipient of the Prime Minister's National Youth Award for Excellence, Mr. Holness expressed deep sadness at the tragedy. 29-year-old C.J. Cunningham was shot and killed by gunmen on Saturday. As a young entrepreneur, Mr. Cunningham was the owner and CEO of Fairfoods Farm Jamaica, which incorporates greenhouse technology. He received the 2022 Prime Minister's National Youth Award for Excellence for Agriculture and Agroprocessing. Mr. Holness says his innovative approach to farming and dedication to his community was evident in every aspect of his work. The Prime Minister also strongly condemned the shooting death of Carson Bennett, a student at the Grange Hill High School in Montego Bay. A female student was also injured in that incident. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Land ownership, the foundation of stability and security, where dreams take root and legacies endure, anchoring generations to their past while propelling them into the future. Let's learn more about land ownership in Jamaica. Becoming a landowner is a significant feat for most people. That feeling of entitlement and success of being able to turn your own key and say, welcome to my home. This could be you, and the government is doing its part through the Adjudication Services Division of the National Land Agency. Systematic registration is defined as the process of land titling through a determined jurisdiction and it's performed on a commune by commune basis. Now what exactly do, does that mean? It means that it's the methodical and orderly registration of parcels of land in a designated area using the adjudication process. Adjudication is defined as the process through which existing rights in a parcel of land are finally and authoritatively ascertained. Key things to note, adjudication doesn't alter existing rights or create new ones. It merely establishes what rights exist on ground. Now that we've established the definition of these very important terms, let's get down to the meat of the matter. You have a piece of land or you've been living on land that you do not have the title for, but have legitimate claims. Let's find out how you can go about becoming certified landowners utilizing the National Land Agency's adjudication services. Systematic registration may be new to Jamaica, but it's certainly not new to the world. At the National Land Agency, we have a wealth of information on unregistered land parcels in Jamaica. So currently we know that the parishes with the lowest rates of registration are Portland and St. Elizabeth. So we'll definitely be targeting those two parishes. The mandate of the Adjudication Services Division is to assist landowners who have been in open, undisturbed and undisputed possession of their land for upwards of 12 years to claim ownership of their land via systematic registration using the adjudication process. There's a proposed adjudication process for systematic registration and we have benchmarked other jurisdictions and the adjudication process will entail the following. The first is the identification of an adjudication area, project area. The next step will look at what are the areas in those parishes where there's a lot of economic activity or they're near town centers, you know, probably farming, farmlands, where these farmers will be able to benefit from having a certificate of title to use as collateral security. 
Once you know an area has been identified, a recommendation will be made to the minister to declare that area as an area for systematic registration. Surveying will go hand in hand with the adjudication process. So you can look out for the team from the Adjudication Services Division as they will be situated within the selected communities. These teams will be visiting households parcel by parcel, interviewing landowners and investigating whether or not they have been in open, undisturbed and undisputed possession of their land for over 12 years. The adjudication record it will be published in a daily newspaper circulating not only in Jamaica but across the diaspora. So it's not only notice to community members and notice to Jamaica, but it is notice to the world that persons are claiming to be the owners of land. Now, let me start with the positive. Were there no objections to the adjudication record? As the director, I'll be able to issue what is known as an adjudication certificate. And this adjudication certificate will be deemed to be conclusive proof of ownership. This is now the documentary proof that the person on that certificate is in fact the owner of the land. Where there are objections, however, all these objections will be referred to the adjudication committees and adjudication committees are established in accordance with section 9 of the Special Provisions Act to determine ownership rights in land. Now that I've given you the basic information that you need to regularize your status as a landowner, it's now up to you to make that step. All the best. As children of Her Excellency the Warrior Nanny of the Maroons and as sons and daughters of Excellencies Sam Sharp, Paul Bogle, George William Gordon and Marcus Garvey who paid for their lives and their freedoms, we have a duty to the present and the future generations. We have an obligation to fulfill the manifest destiny that is ours as a nation. We are a people with a message for the world. We are a nation that is destined. My vision, the vision of this government, is that we can achieve what any other country in the world has achieved. Mental wellness is always of paramount importance, and so seeking support for your emotional well-being should always be at the forefront of what matters most. Coping Mechanisms for Mental Health is next. Good health, especially our mental health, is an important factor to achieving success. And so, taking care of our body, particularly our brain, which regulates how we function, is key. It's how we think, it's how we feel, it's how we navigate and how we connect with each other and how we function, right? And when we're mentally well, it means that we can grow, it means that we can flourish, it means that we can achieve the goals that we've set out to achieve. Mental wellness is one of the four dimensions of health, the others being the spiritual, physical, and the social. They all feed into achieving stability. We talk about in, in terms of mental healthness, it's, ta it's feeling balanced, right? It's being able to think and it's being able to function well. The fact is, the ebbs and flow of life are normal and so understanding and applying coping methods is paramount. It is said that this is the foundation on which character is made. So, ask for help when needed, maintain positive relationships, and take control of the situation. More later. The COVID-19 pandemic has created challenges within the mental realm for many persons, and the Ministry of Health and Wellness, having assessed the impact, has crafted a national program of response. So this program is intended on bringing the experts together and to just help us to readjust back to the normal life that we used to because COVID has been devastating on us. Some people call it mental health, we call it mental wellness. Because we're not promoting the negative, we're promoting the positive. We are saying that your state of mind 
should be positive about life. The program, spearheaded by psychiatrist Dr. Sophia Longmore, seeks to promote a better understanding and acceptance of mental well-being, with special attention being paid to children in schools exhibiting deviant behavior. It evaluates root causes and provides psychosocial support. The need is great for mental wellness in our society at this time. And my role in the Senate, in the Upper House of Parliament, along with being a psychiatrist and president of the Jamaica Psychiatric Association, kind of made it such where I could help to make this happen. So this is a collaboration between the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Ministry of Education and Youth, the Jamaica Psychiatric Association, and the Jamaica Psychological Association. It's a national program that we're doing, but we are starting with where we think the need and the impact is greatest at this time. Our youth have been negatively impacted by COVID-19, with some reporting to be overly stressed from the lack of face-to-face -face interaction and tactile in-classroom learning experience for over two years. Having to adjust to when the call came in for in-person sessions has added to mental angst. It is okay that you did forget some of the study techniques. What we have to do now is to learn to re-engage learn how to live as a young person again to enjoy your education experience enjoy your friends enjoy your classroom setting and your teacher and don't make anything bother you so much that you sit down by yourself in loneliness fear and anxiety we're saying that no matter how you feel depressed or lonely or anxious or uncertain no matter how much the work is giving you trouble or your circumstances at home may be a little problematic. We are saying that we are here for you. There's someone you can come talk to, and there are ways to overcome all of that. The intervention, which began in June, targets schools across the island with face-to-face -face and virtual sessions and provides support for school administrators to cope with the challenges. The expert counsel from these sessions provides an appreciation of the concepts and techniques of mental wellness that we could all use as part of our coping mechanism. When we speak about mental health, right, how do we ensure as young people that our mental health is appropriately addressed? Well, one, we, it's important for us to identify, identify what makes us happy, what's our strength, and also to identify what's our sources of stress. So for example, if you know there's a particular friend group, right, that brings you joy, that brings you happiness, so guess what, know your tribe, know your group that feeds you and feeds your energy. If there's another group or an environment that every time you go there you feel nervous, you feel anxious, you don't want to be there, identify your source of, of stress and stressors. So if you know that, what do you do then? If you know there's a group or an environment that not really sitting with your soul and your spirit, distance yourself because you don't need that, right? Listen, we know life has stressors, but I guarantee you, being positive, expressing gratitude, sometimes just write on a list of things of what you're grateful for, it, it feeds into your well-being. It feeds into how you see the world and how you navigate your challenges. And just be mindful that everybody's paths are different. We're all unique, we have our strengths and we have our flaws and that's okay. Additionally, we have to practice self-worth. And what, what do we mean when we say we have to practice self-worth? You can hug up yourself, know that you are worthy, know that you are deserving, and know that the others around you are worthy and deserving. Major red flags used to identify when we are not well mentally includes lack of concentration or not being able to retain information, a drastic change in appetite, being easily irritable outside your typical window of annoyance, being excessively worried or anxious, prolonged sadness and withdrawal from friends and family. How then do we combat these, these things so that we don't get to the red flag level well, I have the first one there, drink water. But what does that mean if the majority of your body or your body has a high percentage of water? It means you're always using it, right? You get up, you breathe, you're paying attention now. So you have to replenish your body. You have to drink your water. 
less sugar we spoke about that exercise we spoke about that we spoke about making your little gratitude list is important to be grateful it's important to highlight the positive interactions you're not neglecting and you're not minimizing your negative um, interactions or experiences but when the good things happen to you jot it down remind yourself so when the bad things happen you remember oh you know i was on the honor roll oh you know my mother said i was lovely today oh you know i got an a Practicing good breathing exercises and getting adequate sleep by establishing a bedtime routine also provides mental benefits. Cheers to good mental health. Rhythmic hands and a melodious voice, we had the pleasure of sitting with recording artist Mortimer in Hit Me With Music. For the love of reggae music and music overall, I... Your love struck me down lightning, thunder in my soul, baby. My heart beats for you only, every word is true. I'm in love with you. Mortimer seems an unusual name, but it is indeed his given name. Like reggae, the Aloran singer was bred in the city of Kingston. Mortimer admits to being what he calls an indoor child who wasn't allowed to see much of the city, an act he quickly remedied once he got older. What he experienced helped to shape the musician he is today. I listened to a lot of music outside of what was allowed in my household to you know, a lot of soul music, a lot of reggae music, you know, a lot of pop as well. Um, and yeah, like all of them, I think, influenced the sound of my music in one way, shape or the other, you know. Um, plus, the things that I have, you know, just my environment overall and um, my observation, my perspective, you know, all of these things have shaped my music now and the music that I sing now. Listening to the melodic words of the Love Struck artist makes you wonder about his pen to paper process. My process involves a lot of sinking within myself. You know what I mean? A lot of letting go of a lot of things within myself to, um, to give myself the space to kind of be honest, the most honest I can be. Um, when I'm writing. It's a very immersive process for me, you know what I mean? I hate to be bothered in those, in those times. Oh, brother man, oh, brother, brother man, you can stop for a breath, but don't you quit. From an artistic family, his career could have gone no other way. My mother used to sing, and my father writes as well, and, um, you know, I grew up in an artistic household overall. My father is a painter, and um, I too, I, I dabble in art as well. Still, his path took his parents by surprise. For the love of reggae music, I have put myself in a position to be forsaken by family. <laughs> the church boy who wanted to be a reggae artist. So, how was that conversation? I wish it was a conversation, but it wasn't, unfortunately. There was no conversation more than I would need to leave if this is the kind of lifestyle that I'm going to pick up. The music was, yeah, the choice of a child who wanted to be his own man and not necessarily walk in daddy's footsteps. And it's right, you will feel a fire, nothing's wrong. With that thing desire, just be willing to pay what it requires. Many artists play their music in the shadows and fade away when the light appears. But here we are with Mortimer. Besides his obvious talent, a collaboration with Protégé is credited with his fortune. I definitely would say that song did a lot for like the visibility of, of my career. I went to rehearsal one evening, he told me he had somebody to meet, to meet me, 
you know what I mean, somebody for me to meet. <laughs> and um, it was protege and winter, James at the time. And, you know, they were like, yo, we've been listening to the stuff you've been making in Paris and, you know, your other music that you have come out as well. Um, and we'd like to work with you. And um, from there, we developed that a working relationship, you know, and we got into the music of things and it was fantastic, very natural, very organic kind of situation. Um, the first time I heard it, I was like, whoa, you know, and yeah, it was, it was a joy and a privilege for me to sing that for sure. Musical collaboration is often sought when trying to reach another audience. By his own admission, collaboration played a significant role in his career. But how does he feel about the coupling in general? Collaboration is very important, I think. I have been caught in the past, of, um, you know, with feelings of, oh, well, yeah, it's my music and it's my music and I need to write this particular way and it needs to have this particular bass line. And while all of that is good too, Collaboration kind of helps you get out of yourself sometimes too for the benefit of the music itself. It gives you a chance to see from somebody else's eyes, to hear from somebody else's ears, and to experience just another person's perspective overall. And all of that now combined together, you know, um, creates a work of art that is so multi-dimensional, you know what I mean? In, in thought that you end up with a really solid product. Given the opportunity, who would you like to collaborate with? Bob, for sure, for sure. <laughs> it's possible that we could go vault diving, but it's also possible that opportunity won't happen. Who else? Chronix is one. I'd love to collaborate with Burning Spear. I think he is a powerful force in reggae music. There is a lot of talk about the state of music and who does reggae these days. I don't subscribe to that notion that reggae music is dead or belong to anybody. But I will say though that the state of the music now um, is it's like a it's a bittersweet situation for me because there's good music being made. I definitely believe so, and I hear it all the time. Then there's music being made that's not so good for the brain, you know? But in the state of responsibility and perspective, I feel like there are aspects of the music that can be better. Good music is being made, you know what I mean? You have a lot of great artists out there that's making music, that's moving the culture forward. And we can say that Mortimer is one of them. The singer is set to release his debut album this year, and though not willing to say much about it, he was willing to let us know that the album is more of a note to himself. If I was like a chance to breathe you, make me feel all kinds of things. The things I like about you most are way beyond what I can see. We're at the end of our program, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another lineup geared towards providing you with information on the government's policies and initiatives for building a better Jamaica. You may visit our website, gis.gov.jm, to re-watch the show or to catch up on the others we have on the site. I'm Adrian Atkinson from the entire production team here at the GIS. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.